Here on this Debaco University video, I'm going to be going over radish use in organic farming systems. Okay, if you're wondering how you might want to incorporate radish in organic farming systems, this is a little research article that I'm going to provide a great summary of. So first off, that article, this is that, um, if you want to look at it in more detail, but for the citation right here. So if you want to look at some more of, of the specifics, here is your resource to look at too. I'm going to provide a summary here. So first off, the radish seed stock. Well, when we're looking at our um, radishes, uh, it's, there are currently two radish varieties that are marketed for cover cropping with certified genetics. Uh, Graza, Raza, and Tillage Radish. All radishes are insect pollinated and cross pollinate easily, increasing the likelihood of genetic variability if not grown in strict isolation of one another. So the effects on soil structure. Well, when we're looking at under favorable conditions, uh, radish roots can actually extend three feet deep in only 60 days. The root, commonly referred to as a tuber, even though it's not botanically correct, can extend more than 12 inches. After radishes winter kill, their large fleshy roots desiccate, and the channels created by those roots uh, tend to remain open at the soil surface. This opening that we can see uh, located right over here, uh, created by those roots, uh, tend to allow for improving of infiltration, surface drainage, and also aid in soil warming. All great benefits. Uh, how of, however, radishes can also have an effect on weeds. A good stand of radishes can eliminate nearly all weed growth both during and for some time after active radish growth. The, to obtain near complete weed suppression, radishes should be planted early, basically six or more weeks before frost, um, at relatively high population um, densities, which is considered to be more than five plants per square foot. Uh, into a clean seed bed. So they don't really compete well initially, but in that clean seed bed, you can have kind of those kind of suppression, weed suppression, allopathic effects, even post radish um, removal or death. Now the effects on seed bed preparation, well, after winter kill or other causes of mortality, radish residues deteriorate rapidly. As a result, fall biomass production is unlikely to interfere with spring field work, which is a great thing. Unlike some other cover crops, so when we're looking here at the dates, this is basically the month of April, and we're looking at volumetric soil uh, concentration, and then we're looking at daily range of soil temperature. We're seeing rye compared to a radish here. Now the rye tends to have colder soil temps than the radish overall, um, so that can be important for spring planting. We're trying to get that soil warmed up quicker to get germination. Here we're looking at no cover crop forage radish and rye, rye being up here, and then down here being the forage rash, that volumetric soil water concentration. So we're reducing the amount of water in that soil, allowing it to infiltrate more. In the early spring, that is what can help allow our soils to warm up. We're removing some of that water. Now we see here at the end, there must have been some rain events that occurred, but for the most part, reducing that moisture can allow that ability for growers to go into a field earlier. Now, the effects on soil erosion and runoff. So, radishes grow rapidly when planted in late summer or early fall, and 10 pounds an acre drilled on a 7.5 inch rose can provide full canopy enclosure uh, in about three weeks. This canopy interrupts raindrops, minimizing surface impaction and detachment of soil particles. Decomposing residue uh, due to winter kill can still provide early uh, spring erosion control. All great things. If we look at it kind of here in soil loss in pounds per acre at farm A and farm B, we can see no cover crop versus cover crop being a radish. The erosion from the three February to March storms was negligible for forage radish despite rapidly decomposition of soil surface residues here. So we can see just clearly here two different farms, the massive difference that the incorporation of radish as a cover crop can impact on the reduction in soil loss. And as we all know, soil is very important. So anyways, we can reduce erosion and runoff are good things. Lastly, there are some potential problems. So not everything is 100% perfect because radishes have little tons for wet soils. So radishes are very responsive to nitrogen, and nitrogen deficiency limits their ability to compete with weeds and grow through compacted soil. So not great to put into a really severely nitrogen deficient um, field. Radishes are only moderately cold hardy and need about six weeks of favorable growing conditions to produce sufficient biomass to achieve most of the potential benefits. So again, keep that in mind as well. 
As a warning, uh, rotting radish residues can produce a powerful rotten egg-like kind of sulfur-like odor, particularly during winter thaws. And if you have neighbors close by and are planting in high densities, uh, that could potentially cause you some problems. Uh, so just be aware of that, that with everything there is a benefit and there can also be some drawbacks. So I just want you to be fully aware before you commit to this entirely, but definitely worth some consideration for some of the benefits, but also keep in mind some of those drawbacks.